In southern Afghanistan, British troops are moving against the Taliban, on foot and in armored convoys. Bastion is the largest overseas British military compound built since World War II, home to 6,000 troops. At its heart is a state-of-the-art 10 million pound trauma hospital with two operating theaters and an emergency room which can take up to six patients at a time. Then you, you've got to start thinking in your mind, you know, how you're going to tackle it. You're never quite sure what you're going to be dealing with. And I think that's the thing that sort of gives you a bit of an adrenaline buzz. All three patients are critical, but there are only two operating theatres. It's Dr. Woolgar's job to decide who gets surgery first. In Musa Kala, a heavily armed convoy is about to risk a run through enemy territory. They're not taking on the Taliban, but evacuating the Afghan cop who shot himself to a safe haven where the military air ambulance will fly him to the hospital at Camp Bastion for an operation to save his leg. Dr. Cooper's seeing him off. It's a little bit uh, bumpy um, for the patient, but we've given him a good dose of painkillers and stuff, and he seems quite comfortable. I'm happy with his odds. Um, so at the moment, everything's going fine, as I would like it to go to. So. One, two, three. All right, and down. All right. It's been 18 hours since the policeman shot himself. This time, he's in Elman province, helping to run the military field hospital at Camp Bastion. Trauma unit, which deals with more than 2,000 casualties a year. People's lives depend on our skill and expertise, and the troops that are out on the front line have to be confident that the medical services that are backing them up are the very best. Lawrence is one of a hundred volunteers from the NHS who are in Afghanistan. Many are on their first tour of duty. That expert medical team is needed right now in the heart of Taliban territory. As the Chinook comes into land, the crew release flares to confuse any heat-seeking missiles they know the Taliban have trained on them. They have no idea what they're flying into or who they'll be picking up. All they know is there's been a firefight and the Taliban are everywhere. And this is a surprise. Only one casualty. Not a British soldier. The reports were wrong. An 11-year-old boy caught in the battle in a coma. The aircraft is in the air and in band and it's got four stretch cases on board. And um, three of them sound as if they're fairly serious with chest injuries. The worst off are related. A young boy and his grandfather. Both critically ill. Both with suspected chest injuries. The boy is the most serious. Scissors, forceps, archery, forceps. Those big blue, blue, uh, ten bolt trays. Open them up. Pull yeah. out the biggest pair of uh, pliers you can. The little boy only had one one side of the chest wall moving. It was fairly obvious um, that he had a collapsed lung. Uh, the collapsed lung means that uh, you can't breathe in to that lung, and it's quite dangerous. It, uh, it, it can very quickly stop your breathing altogether. Can you explain to this little child? I'm going to make his breathing easier. Drastic action is required. Major Richards, the GP, must now become Dr. Richards, the surgeon. Can you ask him, is he breathing more easily then? Oh. 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 
I've got air entry on this side now. So good news. But the good news is mixed with bad. How's your man over there? Is he fitting? Is he fitting? The boy's grandfather has taken a turn for the worse. The grandfather is still fitting, and Dr. Richards is desperately trying to find out why. The old man, uh, he'd had this fit and wasn't able to, to get oxygen in, into the blood supply. That was a, a clear sign that something fairly dramatic was going on. Richards thinks the old man could also have a collapsed lung, but he can't be sure. Pumping oxygen in as best we could, and it was very hard to be sure which side it was, so I was in a bit of a fix. You have a breathing problem, you fix something to make the breathing easier. Can you explain, then I'm just about to make a small cut. I'll push a tube into his chest and his breathing should be easy. The solution I chose was to put a chest drain in, even though I wasn't sure that he'd got a collapsed lung. Which means the man and his grandson can be handed over to a local civilian hospital. best friends go back to work in the battlefield ER, they take some comfort from the medical successes of their tour of duty. Over the two months they've been in Afghanistan, they've assisted in 17 emergency operations, during which limbs have had to be cut off. Amputations which, to the certain knowledge of the doctors and nurses, have saved lives, which otherwise would have been lost. It's an end-to-end joined-up trauma care system, and it's producing results which I think really would be um, the envy of, uh, of many major hospitals uh, in the UK.